Hola, mi gente. ¿Cómo estás? Um, I hope you're all doing well. My name is Makeda Valletta, and I'm reporting live from Colombia. Well, this I'm, I'm live on IG and on YouTube. I'm recording for a different on a different camera to post on YouTube because when I'm out of the country. It's always blurry when I do lives. Um, and so if you do not know me and are not familiar with me, I am somebody who's dedicated my life to studying all the ways to take our bodies to its highest level. But our minds are also a part of that. And um, I'm a believer in holistic health, right? And when you're dealing with holistic health, you're dealing with a lot of different things. Sorry, my nose is itching. When you're dealing with holistic health, you're dealing with a lot of different things. Um, and you have to look at the full organism and everything around it. And so um, one thing that I think, you know, lately there's been a lot of deaths. I mean, people die every day, but there's been a lot of major public deaths. Um, and there's a lot going on. And every time, you know, death in general, whether it's people I know or famous people, especially weird, crazy, traumatic deaths, I um, have a tendency to want to um, look into those things on a spiritual level. Um, lately, I have been really kind of, um, probably ever since Nipsey died, even before that, but when Nipsey died, I really became even, I dove deeper into the unseen world, right? Um, because one thing that is important is cleansing your energy fields and protecting your energy fields, okay? Because when things happen to people, right? Like if somebody gets cancer or some degenerative disease, you can say that for years they weren't doing the right things to be healthy, okay? Sometimes they might have been exposed to something. But a lot of times people who end up getting cancer or things like that they were just, they had the wrong practices for years. And a lot of things that people do that they think is not a big deal or they think is actually good for them is not, okay? And this is what I talk about a lot. If you follow me on my other page, The Body Scientist, which is the, under, yeah, my other YouTube page, The Body Scientist 81. I'm sorry for the noise outside. If it gets too loud, if the noise outside gets too loud, let me know and I'll have to like close the door and see if it lessens it. It could be a little loud here. Um, but what was I saying? Um, yeah, so we know, and me as an exercise physiologist and as a nutritionist, I know that like if somebody gets heart disease or cancer, that didn't just come out of nowhere. That, they, that person definitely did not have the right habits um, over some time. So there's a lot of things that's known, a lot of things that we can do to prevent physical illnesses. Um, but when it comes to like freak accidents and dying too young because that's one thing that bothers me is dying too young right people you see that die too young um and there's a lot of people who say they don't believe in like witchcraft or they don't believe in um people's energy being able to affect you and until you have actually really dealt with that um and had certain experiences where you've dealt with that and seen that to be true like a lot of times people don't believe that but I can tell you that even if you don't believe that someone else's energy can affect you, it doesn't mean that it can't, okay? Because like somebody may not believe that a brick hitting them is going to hurt them, but if a brick falls off the building onto them, it's going to fucking hurt, okay? If a brick falls 10 flights above, it might kill you. If somebody throws a brick at your face, it's going to hurt whether you believe it or not. So the thing is, is that every single culture around the world, every single indigenous culture had their own spiritual practices and beliefs. But one thing that you see that's universal is that all indigenous cultures have ways to protect their energy, ways to cleanse their energy, okay, and different rituals and things they did, um, you know, for spiritual health. Now, for years, you know, I have questioned what I believe and what I don't believe. My introduction into this came from studying black dance, okay, so in 2006, I mean, I grew up dancing, but in 2006, I, I um, submerged myself in Congolese dance, Afro-Haitian, Afro-Cuban, Afro-Brazilian, Afro-Puerto Rican, 
And then also, you know, while I'm in Colombia right now, I came here to study Afro-Colombian dance forms, which are very different than Afro-Cuban, Afro-Puerto Rican, Afro-Dominican, Haitian. They're all very different, okay? And in studying those dances, there's a lot I learned about the history of Afro-Indigenous people in the Americas and our intertwined history. A lot of things that, um, sorry, loud. A lot of things, a lot of things that has not been documented in our history, I've learned through dancing. But also, there's a lot of medicine in it. And I talk about this in other videos, why dance is my medicine. And even when I, sometimes when I post dance videos, I try to explain that it's a healing tool for me. It's something that helps to keep me sane, and something that helps to keep me healthy on so many levels. And I think people might think I'm joking and they don't really understand what I'm saying, right? But um, dance to Afro-Indigenous people, dance was something that was used to connect with spirit. Um, it was used in ritual. It was used to make it rain. It was used at death, okay? It was used at birth. Dance. And so the thing is, is that through that, I remember even through some Afro-Brazilian movement that I was doing, I remember there was a dance where you're just, you're constantly pushing away, right? This Afro-Brazilian dance, constant motion. And I remember the teacher saying, oh, this is, has to do with pushing negative energy away, okay? And I remember her saying that, and it's like, okay, somebody could be doing that motion and not have any idea that's what that means. But if you put your mind into it, if you're doing that and you put your mind into it, um, your intention into it, it makes it even more powerful. Okay, so the thing is, is that um, for me, you know, I travel all over the place by myself. You know, I've been a lot of dangerous places in the U.S., a lot of dangerous places in the world. But number one, I move with caution. So you have to observe the obvious, you know, like I don't, I think some people, no, I don't think, I know. Some people just have really bad judgment and do really dumb things. Some people have bad judgment and they still survive. Okay, they were lucky. But bad judgment can kill you. So for me, like, when it comes, I, I think about protecting my physical, but I also think about protecting my energy fields. So for one thing, I don't do risky things. Like when I travel and I'm in cars with people, I mean, I can't help this when I'm in cabs in the Caribbean or cabs in Latin America and they drive like they have a death wish and there's no driving rules. All I can do in that, posi in that, in that position is pray because they're not going to change how they drive. But when I'm in the States and I'm with people I know, like I know a lot of people who drive, their driving makes me so nervous. And, you know, a lot of people take a lot of risks with driving. A lot of people. It's just like a split second and that they could be out of here, okay? And for me, my life is worth way too much. I care way too much about my life to like put it at risk like that. So there's a lot of people that I won't ride in the car with them. I've ended friendships over that. Um... Now, um, but when it comes to protecting your energy fields, right? Like if uh, uh, so many Africans, you know, I have two Nigerian ex-boyfriends and um, both of them were pretty clueless on, you know, different spiritual practices from Nigeria. They seem to learn more about it from me and other Afro-Americans and they actually learned about it from their family. Um, I've also seen that with Haitians. I've seen that with uh, a lot of Haitian American friends of mine where their parents did not teach them anything about voodoo. They kind of shunned that and they were just very Catholic and now they don't really know that much about it, okay? I've had, I remember having this client friend years ago, he was Haitian American. Both of his parents had passed away and he was always asking me what certain things meant and I'm like, dude, I don't know, you know? And um, so the thing is though, Getting to the point, um, I very much believe in protecting my energy, right, and cleansing it. Um, but there are people who also do spiritual work, and that's a whole other discussion that I'm going to try to intertwine in here. But it's important to protect your energy fields because the evil eye is real. And if you look at any culture in the world, this is throughout Europe, Native Americans, the Spanish-speaking countries have very... Um, they have a lot of things that they do to protect their babies and everything from the evil eye, okay? And the evil eye is people who just 
are staring at you and don't wish you well. The people who are staring at you and hope something bad happens. The people who might be doing rituals at night to fuck up your life, okay? That shit is real. You cannot, you can't, you can't stop people from sending negative energy in your direction. But what you can do is do things to protect your energy, okay? And you need to cleanse your energy just like you clean your body. And so for me, that's when I really started wearing crystals and jewelry and stuff, right? It was like in 2007. I had so much craziness happening in my life. There was a woman who was stalking me. Um, she was actually a fan of my dad's, psycho fan. And she started stalking me because she wanted to drive my dad crazy. And this is a book, you know. Like I said that when I was 40, I was going to write a book about this. Um, have a couple more years. But... Um, this psychopath woman, she was like a fan of my dad's from the radio in New York. And I was always on the radio with my dad all the time. Um, people did not know what I looked like. This was like 2006, 2005, 6, before social media really. And I had a huge following on the radio in New York who didn't even know what I looked like, okay? But everybody who knew my dad knew that he was crazy about me because he always talked about that. So this woman, you know, she was jealous, psycho, and she wanted to make my dad go crazy and started fucking with me in my life. And it took me about 10 years to even get my shit back on track after dealing with what I dealt with with this woman. I ended up um, going to court with the NYPD, almost went to trial with the NYPD. I moved out of New York for some years because the NYPD was harassing me. It was a lot, a lot, right? And during that time, I remember, I had a, um, because I didn't grow up religious. I did not grow up religious. Um, But I had an aunt, a godmother, who was a priestess in a couple of traditional African traditions. And when I was going through all this craziness, I remember um, at one point, because it was like one thing on top of the next on top of the next. And then one time my cousin came to my apartment in Harlem, and she heard voices, right? And she's like, is your brother here? And I'm like, no. You know, I lived alone. My brother wasn't there. Um, and then she, she notices this this thing in the, in the front of my apartment called it um, El Agua. It's like a concrete little dome thing with cowrie shells on it, right? And she saw it sitting in the front of my apartment when you walk in. And she said, why is this here? You shouldn't have this if you are not initiated, right? And initiated into the Yoruba tradition or Ifa. And, oops, hold on a minute. It had been given to me by a man that uh, I was kind of dating at the time. At the time, I was doing a lot of Haitian, Afro-Cuban, Congolese, Afro-Brazilian dance every single day. I was drumming. And he would always tell me, if somebody um, tries to give you something, if a drummer tries to give you something, don't take it. Don't take it. He's always warning. But then he would always be trying to wash my hair. And I never let him wash my hair because I don't like, I'm a black woman. And I don't want anybody washing my hair except the woman who does my hair. But he's always trying to do stuff like that. And then all of a sudden, and I remember I was attracted to him. But then I remember all of a sudden, um, he would come to visit me. And I just didn't want to be bothered. I didn't know why. He would come to visit me. I'd be in my bedroom. He'd be in the room sleeping. And I couldn't understand why he was, why his energy was irking me. Because he didn't do anything. I couldn't point to anything that he did that made me feel this way, right? So, but when my cousin sees this in my apartment, and I told her that, you know, this dude gave it to me, and she's like, oh, no, no, no. This should not be in your house if you're not initiated. She calls her mother, and her mother was upset because it had been in my apartment for a year, okay? And her mother was like, oh, my goodness. If you, this, this is a serious spiritual entity. This needs to be appeased. If you don't appease it, it can wreak complete havoc in your life. This should not be in your house. This is totally against protocol. And it was so serious that I had to drive it to Brooklyn to my godfather, um, her her uh, husband, so he could do readings on it, okay, to find out what I needed to do to dispose of it. I couldn't just throw it out. Now, at this point in my life, I had complete craziness happening, okay? It felt like the rug was pulled from underneath me. This woman was stalking me, okay? Psycho woman, okay? You guys see me post a lot about narcissists. You might, you know, uh, for people on YouTube, you can go back and look. I have, oops, 
I have several videos where I talk about narcissists, and I'm not done with that. Um, and on IG, people will see me post about it all the time. But this woman was a narcissist, okay? And once you learn about narcissists, they're textbook. And this is why I'm always talking about narc awareness and telling people you need to know about them. Because if you don't know about, if you if you are not educated on narcissists, you can end up wasting so much of your life with the wrong fucking people. Because some people get into relationships with narcissists, but narcissists can be people at your job, they can be friends, and they're totally destructive. Once you understand how to recognize them and identify them, it's easier for you to deal with them, get rid of them quick, okay? So, um, this woman was unrelenting in how she stalked us for years, okay? And, um, never met this woman a day in my life, okay? Caused so much destruction. But anyhow, there was so much going on at that time in my life. I felt like, this is 2007, like the rug had been pulled from underneath me, and it tested me at who I was at my core. I feel like after going through that situation and everything that it caused in my life, I felt almost like nothing can break me now. You know, like I know who I am now. I knew how I was before, but now I'm sure of it because I was being attacked of the person. I was being attacked for being the person that I am. Sometimes there's also some, there's so many things I want to say. Okay. Um, <laughs> there's so many things I want to say to make me realize I need to write a book. Um, but there's also such thing as past life karma, okay? There's past life karma. Um, I don't believe that everybody is, I don't believe that every spirit that's here has been on this earth as many times. I think also some people that are here, some spirits that are in this physical earth right now may not have been here for hundreds of thousands of years. Other spirits that are here might have been here a hundred years ago, which is not that long ago. Um, we have past lives. I believe that. And past lives, things in our past lives can affect us in this life. Okay. And one of the things, um, one of the, 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 also the things that black dancers taught me is about, wow, is about sacred sexuality, right? You hear a lot of people talk about Tantra and stuff like that. Tantra is just one form of sacred sexuality. My introduction to sacred sexuality was Taoism from ancient China, but every culture had a sacred sexual practice at one point prior to colonialism. When I started studying Native Americans, uh, and everybody has their own little ashe that they, the own little thing that they um, throw on it, their spiritual practice, their sacred sexual practice, right? So, and when you study, when you look around the world and study a bunch of things, you're able to connect the dots and create something more powerful and have a deeper understanding. But with the Native American side of things, they put a huge emphasis on cultivating your sexual energy for lucid dreaming, how important lucid dreaming is. And lucid dreaming means that you're conscious, you remain conscious in your, um, while you're asleep, okay? And the ability to do that, to connect your waking world with your dreaming world, okay? So, um, dreaming awake, dreaming asleep. So let's say you dream about a big red hat. And then in your waking life, you have to find this big red hat, okay? And in your waking life, you find a yellow coat. And then in your dreams, you find this yellow coat and you're connecting, you know? And you're able to control your dreams and navigate. That is fueled by sexual energy, um, according to Native Americans. And the reason why that's important is because if you're able to master lucid dreaming, consciousness when in your sleep, that's the same consciousness, that, that dream body, okay, that dream body side of us is a part of us that spins off when we die. Okay, that's a part of us that spins off into the ethers when we die. So if you're able to maintain your consciousness in your sleep, then when you pass on, you'll be able to guide your spirit to where it's supposed to be. Okay, so we didn't just spin off into oblivion. That was um, the Native American take on it, right? Uh, the Taoists talked about the Taoists of ancient China. The Taoists of ancient China talked about cultivating sexual energy to become spiritually immortal. 
And so to me, that's the same, you know, like spiritual immortality. Well, if you're able to be conscious when you're dead and guide your spirit to where it's supposed to go, that to me is spiritual immortality, right? Um, so what was I going to say? Um, I just lost, I just lost my train of thought. Uh, I should I should have written down notes. Okay, so I'm talking about um, sexual energy and spiritual immortality. Okay, so ugh, why did I lose my damn train of thoughts? Um, somebody asked me what country I'm in. I'm in Colombia. And in Latin American countries, you always see, you know, like even in my neighborhood in New York, I'm from Washington Heights, Harlem, in New York City, which is heavily Dominican. And you constantly see signs for limpias and readings. Limpias are cleansings, right? Cleansing your spiritual fields. Um, and cleansing your house, cleansing the energy. Very, very important. Um, so anyhow... The thing is, is that when I was going through that in 2007, I knew that, um, and, and my uncle did a reading, that was the first time I had a reading done on me, okay? So I've always had, like, up, in, up until now, I still am, like, I always had mixed feelings about readings, about spiritual readings. Um, I've, now I've come to believe that it has a lot to do with who does your reading and how they do it, right? But I remember I had... Um, a reading first I had a reading from a woman uh, I was walking down the street in New York and in the West Village and a gypsy woman came up to me and started telling me about how I had cracks in my aura because she was like you're a good person but um, people are sending negative energy to you and you're totally unaware of it and she told me to meditate with some crystals and then come back and at first I'm listening to her but I was just like you know whatever but I'm listening to her but I wasn't I wasn't holding on to what she was saying, right? But she warned me. I remember she told me some past life stuff about myself, right? And then she told me, you know, some past life stuff is going is coming back to you now, okay? It's going to come back to you now. So when people start flipping on you, being crazy, just understand it's not them. This is past life energy, okay? And I remember her telling me this, and... um I'm like, okay, but things seem kind of fine at the moment, right? I remember she also told me that I drive the ladies crazy. And I was like, really? I wish that were true because women have never been in my face like that. And over the years, I've come to think that, you know, I've had a lot of issues with women as much as I, I love women. Um, and I was never the kind of person to ever think people were jealous of me, right? I never thought that... Um, about anybody that never occurred in my mind that somebody was jealous of me and I remember my mom used to tell me that about certain people even in high school oh this you know this person who's supposed to be a friend of yours she's jealous and I'm like no 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 so um over the years I've had to learn that jealousy is a real thing and when you're not a jealous person a lot of times you never think that somebody could be jealous of you you're not even thinking that when you're a person with a good heart with a big heart um and you're so giving, and you're not petty, you don't even think that. So that's one of the things that freaked me out about Nipsey Hussle's death, okay, was the fact that he's a Leo like myself, okay? I'm a Leo. People misunderstand Leos, okay? Fire signs in general were very um, to the point. That's Aries, Sag, Leo. We are very to the point, you know? Fire is enlightening, okay? Fire is the truth. It's the light. It's enlightening. Okay, but a lot of people... You know, they, they take offense to that. And so Nipsey Hussle was a Leo, and he, we all know he was a giving person. He cared about his community. But I'm sure if he came to him with some sideways shit, he, he would address it. And he was confident in who he was, right? And a lot of people get intimidated by that. A lot of people get mad at confident people, especially when they have low self-esteem and less going for them. So one of the things that really freaked me out about Nipsey's death was the fact that he was killed over jealousy, you know, like, I mean, even the dude who did it, I think there are people behind it, behind the dude who did it, but the dude who did it, I'm sure was really jealous of him and had hate and envy in his heart. 
And so it freaked me out that somebody could, somebody could get killed. I mean, I knew that this can happen, but just to see, like, somebody get straight murdered who has kids at home because of jealousy, right? And at that moment, it made me thankful that the psycho people I've come in contact with didn't have the money and power to hurt me physically, okay? Because when I was going through what I was going through in 2007 with this crazy woman, I remember thinking to myself, if this woman had money, she would have probably paid to get me beat up or something. I would have been in the hospital bed. And I thought to myself, I would rather go through what I was going through with her than to be injured, to be physically harmed, okay? Because as a kid, I remember my dad used to always say, sticks and stones can break my bones, but words can never hurt me. Sticks and stones can break my bones, but words can never hurt me. So important, you know, and that's one of the things that kept me sane. Even as a kid, when people would say things that make me really mad, I would just think of that. It's not that it's not that big of a deal. You know, I'd rather people say shit than to actually physically harm me. And that's the thing that Chris Rock, I think, was talking about with bullying. Oh yeah, that's what I wanted to do a video about today was bullying. Okay. But yeah. Chris Rock was talking about that. And he's just like, you know, people talk about internet bullying is so bad, but he feels like getting hit upside the head and pushed down the stairs is even worse, you know? Um, and so, yeah, I just always tell myself, you know, like, whatever words people say, I could deal with that. But if somebody had killed me or, you know, maimed me, that's a whole lot worse. So you see situations like with Pop Smoke, with Nipsey Hussle, people just being killed over straight jealousy, okay? Um... And a lot of that is, as an adult, you have to be aware of those things, okay? You have to be aware that everybody's not your friend. And no matter how good you think you are to people, no matter how giving you think that you are um, to the community or whoever, that doesn't mean that, um, it doesn't mean that um, everybody has your best interests at heart, right? And this is one of the reasons why I stay to myself a lot, okay? I say to myself a lot, like some years ago, I used to have a lot of friends, friends, right? Years ago. And a lot of those people, I don't talk to anymore, you know? Um, 2014, because I remember, you know, for years, I was traveling around the country, teaching workshops to women about yoni eggs, nani eggs, and I made a lot of what I thought were friends around the country, in Chicago, in D.C., in L.A., in um, ATL, in New Orleans just all over the place, right? And so whenever I would go to certain cities, I had girls that, that I would hang out with, and they were all people that were ex-clients of mine. And I remember in 2014, I had a breakup with a dude who I brought into my world, okay? So he knew all these people because of me, and he ended up being just a piece of shit, right? So... I broke up with him, and all of a sudden, I started seeing people's true colors. A whole bunch of people who had been up my ass, and supposedly friends had so much to say, it was talking shit behind my back. There's a lot of people I stopped talking to at that moment. See, for me, I have no problem cutting people off, you know? My high school best friends, I don't talk to any of them. You know, there's one of them that I don't have a problem with. The rest of them, I don't talk to them. And I thought they'd be my friends forever. You know, my, my twin brother, he's still friends with his high school friends. And everybody that I went to high school with and I see them on Facebook, they're all still friends with their clique. But for me, when I was a senior in college, I started, some stuff came out towards me from them that showed me they were jealous. And it was super hurtful to me. And I just stopped talking to them. To me, once I see that you're jealous of me, and, and, and I've been so giving to you, okay, and you're jealous and you're harboring these feelings, I'm going to stop fucking with you right then, okay? So there's a lot of people I've cut off because of that over the years. And it's, 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 it's hurtful, but I'd rather cut you off than you hurt me, right? You hurt, you make it, it, it worse. Like, I don't want any fake people around me. I don't want anybody around me who's not wishing me well. And so I feel like life is a process of elimination. So I'm constantly cutting people out of my life. That when I see, when I see what I see, that this person is full of shit. You know, I'm getting bad vibes. I see that you ain't what I thought. I don't give a fuck how long I've been friends with you. You know? Some people, you give them too many chances. People's energy can't affect you, right? So somebody asked me um, what stone this is. This is fire agate, right? 
And it's a very protective stone. It's also a Leo stone, but it's also very protective. And so in 2007, I remember I was in New Orleans uh, the first time, and I met a dude who made jewelry with crystals and stones. And I already was a little bit into crystals because I was working with them vaginally and as yoni eggs. Um, but crystals and stones, put they omit an energy field. Everything omits an energy field. People omit energy fields. Electronics omit energy fields. Crystals and stones. Every living creature omits a, an energy field. Okay, so there's a whole unseen world that we're unaware of, that we cannot see. That is very real. And so for me, I felt like, okay, I can't stop people from sending negative energy my way, but I can do things to protect my energy and to cleanse my energy. And over the years, there's many things that I've learned, okay? But it's something that I have to constantly be conscious of, okay? Ever so often, I have to do a spiritual bath. Ever so often, every so often, I have to do things to... Um, um, uh, protect my energy, you know, and I believe in prayer, okay, I don't pray to Jesus, though, but my ancestors, not everybody has good ancestors, right, so not everybody needs to call on their ancestors, some people have some good ancestors and some bad ancestors, so when you call on ancestors, you need to be careful with that, who you're calling, right, but if you have powerful ancestors and you have ancestors who have your best interests at heart, um, which in my case, I know I do, my ancestors are everything. So there's a lot I do for my ancestors because if you call on your ancestors and you're asking them for help, you have to feed them, okay? There is life after death. There is life after death, okay? And this is the reason why people had rituals for the dead, okay? This is why people dance for the dead. You know, death is sad. It's sad when people die, okay? But it's so important to find ways to move that energy and shake it off of us. Because when you mourn too hard, I mean, mourning is natural, right? But when you just can't accept somebody's death and you can't let go, that can hold that spirit here and prevents them from resting in peace. If you are calling on the spirit for help, you know, spirits need to eat. They need to be given something. Even in this in this physical world, you should you have to give something to get something. Okay. So for me, I'm very conscious of that. Okay. I am very conscious of the people that I fuck with, okay? I'm very conscious of cleansing my energy ever so often. So there's something called Florida water, Agua de Florida, which apparently has a very funny history, but it's very much connected to my ancestral hometown where my dad is from, St. Augustine, Florida, okay? Um, and Ponce de Leon and all this, right? So, okay, someone asked me about sage. Um, so, Florida water um, traditionally was made from herbs and things and it's used to cleanse your energy fields. So I use Florida water on a regular basis, um, especially when I've been traveling or I've been around a bunch of people and energies or um, I might have been around somebody that just had bad energy. I use Florida water. Somebody just asked me about sage. Um, sage is cool. But I prefer Palo Santo. Let me show you Palo Santo. I have it over here. Okay. Actually, I should. This right here is Palo Santo. I actually bought this last time I was in Colombia. Last time I was in Cali last year. Sage and, and Palo Santo both come from Native Americans, okay, in South America. Central South America. Palo Santo is a wooden stick. It's a special kind of wood. Palo Santo, sage, and um, dragon's blood are really good for cleansing energy fields, cleansing your space. Now, I tend not to use sage too much. And I'm not like an expert on this, but a few people I know who are really like, you know, spiritually connected 
have told me that sage can bother your ancestors and it can irritate your ancestors or send them away and it, and something else about sage so i don't use sage that much um i'm more of a palo santo person i've always felt like palo santo is more powerful with um cleansing your home or your energy fields of negative energy right if you're a healer a lot of healers you know people who are massage therapists or any type of healer you're a nurse it's important to cleanse your energy fields often because when you're dealing with sick people, you can definitely pick up their energy, okay? You can definitely pick up their energy. Every massage therapist I know, damn near, except for a few. I remember I had so many massage therapist clients, okay? And they would be overweight, and they were so drained all the time. And they were so drained because they were picking up other people's energy when they massaged them, okay? A lot of people talk about picking up people's energy during sex. Yes, you do pick up and can pick up people's energy during sex, but you can also pick up people's energy just being in the room with them, dancing in the room with them, hugging them, um, being on a plane with them, all kinds of shit. Can't help you. Sorry. Can't help you, sorry. Oh my god, sorry. I'm sitting here and I have the, my mains are open, but I have a, a little gate. And you can't see the top part, but some man just came over here, whatever. Um, what was I saying? Sorry for the loudness. People always say New York is so loud, but it's loud as fuck here in, in Colombia. So you hear all the background noise. Um, what was, was that saying? Um, so, oh yes, thank you. Massage therapist, right? Um, just holding on to so much, okay? Also, um, and taking on people's energy. Like, there are times when, like, even maybe two weeks ago, right, I, I hung out with um, this dude who was, like, he was, like, trying to get at me for a while. And I hung out with him. Hold on a minute. He kind of wore me down. I hung out with him. And I wasn't really feeling him like that. Like, I mean, I thought he was okay, but he wasn't what I expected, right? And then I remember, like, the next day just feeling really bad, right? Just not like myself, kind of, like, sad, depressed, I'm crying on the bus, like, why am I like this? And I hate when I get like that. I don't get like that often. But then I realized, and, you know, then I realized because I, I, I wasn't, so, something about him I wasn't feeling, but I couldn't pinpoint it because he didn't actually do anything. But I'm just like, my feelings about him, I don't know. So he convinced me to hang out with him a second time. This second time I hung out with him, I realized the dude was a nut, okay? And he was a narcissist, okay? Like, he was definitely a narcissist. And I'm going to do a video about how to, how to recognize narcissists. Um, I attract a lot of them. And when you're a nice, empathetic person, nice, empathetic people tend to attract a lot of narcissists, okay? And you give them those bitches too many chances. So um, I don't like drama. I will walk away from drama. So um, once I got away from this dude, then I nicely walked away from him. Just like if you see on my Instagram page, for those of you who follow me on Instagram, the incident that happened yesterday with the dude who was trying to talk to me for a long time. I wasn't paying him any attention. And then finally I gave him a chance to shoot a shot and I just wasn't interested. Or no, no, I tried to just say... Thank you for the compliments, and but I wasn't interested, and uh, he just started insulting me, right? So this dude was the same way. I walked away from him nicely, and he starts to send me all these mean messages. And I started to realize, oh my God, like the reason why I felt the way I did was because I came in contact with this energy. And sometimes you have to understand that when you're feeling a certain way, it's not your energy. You can pick up other people's energy, and then you start taking on their misery, right? So... And then it's very easy for that to happen with people who are healers um, and people who are naive, right, to that. So 
cleansing your energy on a regular basis. So for me, like I said, in the dance, right? Um, Afro Brazilian dance taught me a lot about that. But then also, I do I study a lot of Haitian folkloric dance. And in Haitian folkloric dance, and just the dances of the diaspora period in the Americas, there's a difference between African dance and Afro American dance forms. And when I say Afro American dance forms, I'm talking about stuff from South America, Central America, the Caribbean, and North America. Um, they're different, distinctly different than uh, dances from Africa. And that has a lot to do with our experience, slave society, and our experience here in the Americas, the trauma that we went through, and also mixing with Native Americans, okay? Because all the stuff that they say is African over here is just as much Native American. Haitian voodoo is just as much Arawak Taino as it is African, okay? And that's a fact. And the spirits that were responsible for winning the Haitian Revolution were not African spirits, and that's a fact, okay? So there are distinct differences, and there's a lot of medicine in our dances. And um, and this is the reason why, like, I'm always going to shake my ass. I'm always going to be shaking. I'm always going to be shaking my body because there's medicine in that. Whether people believe me or not, I don't give a fuck, you know? I know what I need to do for me, okay? And I know what I need to do to be healthy and live a long time because I am not trying to die at 50. I'm not trying to die at 70. All that is too young for me, okay? Currently... My mother is 70. Currently, my father is 77, okay? And I want them to live beyond 90, all right? So there's a lot of things that goes into that, you know? A lot of things that goes into that. And um, when I see people die in ways that was so preventable, like being around jealous people who killed you or something, it just, it, just it, 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 it irks me for them, but it also freaks me out and just makes me realize how important it is. Like, when I think about the heartbreak that I've had from cutting certain people off, I'm like, I would rather deal with the heartbreak of cutting off people than to deal with the heartbreak of dying too goddamn soon, okay? And not being able to live out my mission on this planet. Period, okay? Spiritual warfare is real. And I have definitely fought a lot of nasty spiritual fights. I don't like to fight, okay? I like peace. That's why I remove myself away from people who piss me off, make my blood boil, and remove myself. But when people are sending energy your direction, okay, and not to talk too much about my personal self, and maybe one day I'll write a book about it, but, you know, there's a lot of different kinds of readings I've had, and uh, for years I wasn't even looking for them, you know. First there was this woman that told me this shit in New York in the beginning of 2007, then um, right after she told me that, this woman started stalking my dad and stalking me. She caused so much destruction, okay? Um, so much destruction in my life, especially. And I never met her a day in my life. Um, and I had a reading then when my cousin found this allegro in my house. And my aunt is telling me, oh no, this should not be there. My aunt was a professor of interfaith, uh, studies or something, interfaith ministry or something, but she knows about a lot of shit. And she's like, this, this entity is a serious spiritual entity. It can wreak havoc in your life. And if you don't appease it. And so I remember having a reading then and being told a lot of things. And then there were some subsequent readings I had after that, that kind of like found me. I would just, me and my mother both would attract seers. Like we weren't even looking for it. And constantly I kept being told that there were people who were jealous of me, particularly women. It was always being said that. Women, 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 right? And also not to get too much into, I don't want to get too much into my shit, but uh, 2010, you know, I had an ex who totally shouldn't have been with, you know, another narcissist that I didn't see. I um, ended up getting pregnant by him, and my godmother said, you need to have a reading. And as soon as I had this reading, and it wasn't with my godmother, it was another priestess in Brooklyn. The first thing she said to me was, your ancestors are not happy. They're really upset. Um, and she also talked about women being jealous, right? Because the dude that I was with, he had a lot of female admirers. I had a lot of male admirers. It didn't really matter. I was, I'm not a jealous person. I felt like, okay, girls love you. Dudes love me. Like, whatever, you know? Um, but... He just wasn't a good person. 
I understand now why my ancestors were upset, but that whole situation ended up being a horrible situation. And to make a long story short, you know, um, this dude turns into the devil, and my dad wanted to kill him, and I never saw myself in that position, never saw myself having a, a child with somebody that I can't stand or my parent, that my family hates, you know. And I ended up going into labor early um, at six months and lost my son. But as traumatic as that was, right, as traumatic as that was, I remember thinking to myself, you know, at least I don't have to deal with him anymore because I, this man was like really trying to make my life miserable. He was really trying to make me lose my son at any, any means necessary, right? And so my first thought was, I'm not strong enough. I didn't do what I was supposed to do to protect my baby, you know, like, and that was my first thought. But then, and then I thought, so I had that mixed with, at least I don't have to deal with him anymore because I know this man would make my life miserable. This is one thing that my dad tried to tell me, you know, just after the fact. And I see people now, right? And and, and, and I'm, I, I understand now why my ancestors were upset. Some people, th there's a lot of different ways to look at things, right? And when you have strong ancestors, I have strong ancestors, right? When you have strong ancestors, sometimes they're not going to let certain things happen, okay? Because one of the things that I said to myself was, okay, well, dude was an asshole, he was trying to make my life miserable. He was trying his best to make me, you know, lose my baby or abort my baby by any, like if he had the money, he probably would have killed me. That's how bad it was. Right. And we were like in love prior to that, but the dude was a narcissist. That's a whole nother. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. People need to understand narcissists. There are more narcissistic men than, than women, but they're narcissistic women too. And they can make your life miserable. And there are people who have spent 20 years with a narcissist, had kids with a narcissist and the shit is just fucked up. Their kids are fucked up. They're fucked up. So for me, it's like, I don't want that. I see so many toxic situations in this world, right? Toxic parenting, you know, parents who can't even speak to each other. I don't understand how you raise kids and you can't speak to the person that you had a kid with. And one and one parent is playing manipulative games and the other parent, that shit fucks kids up, okay? And it creates more narcissists in the world. That's where narcissists come from, freaking childhood trauma and sick shit with, with their parents, okay? So... To me, I'm like, okay, at first I kept thinking, but there are women who go through a lot and they still have their babies. There are women who get beat when they're pregnant and they still have their babies. So why, why, why? You know, but then also understanding that if I have strong ancestors, and I know I do, a lot of people live this, a lot of people live in the world and they don't ever think about their ancestors. They don't ever do anything to honor their ancestors. And they could be fine. They might be fine. But with me, I know I can't do that. There's not a single day that goes by when I'm not thinking about my ancestors doing certain things. I do not believe, okay, I do not believe in doing rituals to obtain certain things. So when people are like, well, I'm going to do a ritual to make him fall in love with me and make him stay. Or I'm going to do a ritual to have a baby. No, because that shit backfires on you. I know a woman, a family friend, who did that. She did some ritual to have a baby, and she ended up having the son from hell. I know two people like that. Well, one person, I don't think he did a ritual, but he did have a son from hell. And that's a, that's a whole nother situation of dealing with genetics. That's the other thing. I don't want to have kids with crazy people because genetics is real. And sometimes the crazy person you have a kid with, those crazy genetics end up in your kid. And there's nothing you can do to make them not crazy. I've seen two people with crazy ass kids that are like seriously demon children. People try to say that there's no such thing as bad kids. Fuck that shit. Yes, there are. There are kids, there are little motherfuckers that will kill you, okay? And this one woman I knew, a family friend, her son, I remember he's like five years younger than me. Ever since he was a little baby, he was bad as shit. And he never stopped being bad as shit. And she was a good mom. She did everything she could to try to make him um, act right. You know, she moved him to the Caribbean. She sent him to all these boarding schools, and it was so funny. Me and my brother used to always laugh because every time this dude got sent someplace, he always broke out. He always broke out and ended up back in her apartment in New York, okay? And funny enough, her apartment was the same apartment that was used in Juice that Tupac lived in. And now this dude is like 30-something, okay, and he's in jail for I don't even know what, and he's still fucked up. He's been a crackhead his whole adult life, like, it's just, and that's her only child. And I'm just like, I would rather not have kids than to have a kid like that, okay? Sorry. 
But when you do things, when you mess with the spiritual world to get shit, like, oh, she she told me she did a ritual. She told me the man that she had a kid with didn't want any more children. He had kids. He didn't want any more kids. She did a ritual to have a kid with him, and that's what she got. And he and, and, and the child's father also... So loud. The child's father also murdered a homeless man in the train station in New York in front of him when he was a kid. He might have been like three. And the father murdered a homeless man in front of him because the father had a problem with homeless people. Straight killed this homeless man for no fucking reason. His father was horrible. He was crazy. So it's like part of the reason why, like she's over here feeling like she's not a good mother. It's like, no, first of all, you had a child with a crazy ass man. So now he got those crazy ass genetics. That's number one. <laughs> number two, you did a ritual to have a baby with somebody. Like, I don't believe in that shit. If somebody is not in love with me on their own, then bye, okay? Because my daddy loves me, and my daddy filled me with self-love. And my dad always told me, since from the time I was a little girl, like who likes you. I remember as soon as I could think, my dad would say, like who likes you. Don't sit around crying over a motherfucker who doesn't give a fuck about you, period, okay? Any man that's with you is lucky to be with you, period. That is what my dad has always said. And... I have standards, you know what I'm saying? So the thing is, is that I'm not going to try to do a ritual to make somebody be with me who doesn't want to be with me. You know, I'm not going to do that. Things need to happen naturally, okay? So when you try to do things in, in the spiritual world and you're going to do a ritual to make this happen, that happen, I don't believe in that. I think that can backfire. Now, the thing is, there's such thing as spiritual debt. So with Haiti, some people say, oh, Haiti's cursed, blah, blah, blah. Now, I don't think Haiti's cursed. But I will say this, Haitian voodoo was used to, um, and during the Haitian revolution, Haitian voodoo was used, okay? When you use spirits and you use powerful energy like that, there is a debt. And that debt, a lot of times, it depends on what it is and what you're dealing with, right? But sometimes the debt is, you can't run from the spiritual commitments of your ancestors. So a lot of Haitian families and Africans too, they have generations in certain um, spiritual practice and certain deities that have been working with their family, assigned to their family, riding their family. Now, if all of a sudden you decide, oh, I don't want to be bothered with that, that shit can backfire on you and your people. And so I feel like in Haiti, even though Haitian voodoo is very much still alive at the same time, I went to Haiti 10 years ago. I want to go back. But when I went there 10 years ago, all I, I've never seen so much Jesus in my life, okay? They had Jesus painted on everything. Jesus, 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 I love Jesus, right? So if you use some really intense spiritual energy and spirits to help you do something as major as overthrow slavery, right? And then you abandon that. You abandon that practice. You abandon those spirits and the work that you're supposed to do in return. Then that can backfire on you. And somebody said on the left hand, it's it's evil. No, I don't. I don't agree with that. The left-handed practice has to do with the female path. Okay. The right-handed practice has to do with the male path. So people try to say left-handed is is negative because everything associated with the divine feminine. The scene is negative, like cats, okay? That's associated with the divine feminine. Witches, associated with the divine feminine. Um, snakes, associated with the divine feminine. Sacred sexuality, raw sacred sexuality. When you deal with the goddesses, you cannot deal with goddesses anywhere and not deal with sacred sexuality. Everything that goddesses do has to do with that. Because sexual energy and spiritual energy are of the same continuum. The right-handed path has to do with putting the fear of God in people. The right-handed path has to do with, um, you know, shunning everything that has to do with the divine feminine. Cats are evil. Snakes are evil. Sex is evil. Okay? So there is an evil side. Yes, there is an evil side to voodoo and any spiritual practices. But I'm not going to call it the left-handed path. Okay? So... So, so the thing is, you know, when you come to the realization that there is life after death, and that there is that we were someplace before we were here, right? So this is 
this lifetime is a small snippet in a much bigger circle of things, right? So for me, an and, and when you understand what you're here for, like I understand, I know what I'm here for. And I know that, I know that what I signed up for, you know, I know that what I signed up for uh, on this earth is not an easy path. It's not an easy path, right? But I'm not going to sit around and feel sorry for myself for the struggles that are there, right? Because I know that I signed up for this. I know that I'm strong enough enough to do this. And I know that as long as I'm alive and nobody is physically harming my body, the things that people say doesn't hurt me, okay? I don't care about that because it's so much bigger than them and it's bigger than me. And I know what I'm here for. I know that I'm a good person. I know that I'm not making a deal with the devil. Some people make a deal with the devil. And there's so much to say about that. But when it comes to rich people, right? Like... Sorry. When it comes to um, rich people, especially rich people who die young, I think some of the people made a deal with the devil sometimes, you know. They made a deal with the devil when they were young to get so much power, you know, this abnormal amount of, of, of power, whether it be as an athlete or an entertainer or just super rich, you're doing certain things to do that. Sometimes... Sometimes that can mean a shorter life, okay? Sometimes that can mean uh, that your life gets cut short way sooner. So for me, I don't wish to be, and, and a lot of people who have a lot of money, most people who have millions upon millions of dollars or billion or 100 million, most of those people have been doing something fucked up to get it. Most of them. So for me, I don't envy that, you know, because there is a judgment day, number one. So if you're down here doing evil shit, you know, I feel like that shit will catch up to you one way or another. One way or another. And, you know, what I was saying in the beginning was when Nipsey died, I started, I was actually in Columbia where I am right now. Sorry, so loud. And I stumbled upon this online reader on YouTube, right? And now I know about the online reading community. But it was one reader that popped up in my YouTube about a reading on Nipsey Hussle's death. And this is like the day it happened. So I remember listening to it. And, and that, like I said, I didn't know if I believed in readings. I always took it with a grain of salt. I know in my own readings, I've consistently heard the same things. And I, I, I'm like, I don't know what I believe until it comes into fruition. It's like, you know, whatever. But one thing I constantly heard was, that there were, uh, oh, damn, my IG live is about to die. Hold on a minute, how long have I been talking? Oh my God, for an hour already? Sorry, people. It's about to die on IG live, but it'll still be on um, YouTube. So you can find this video on YouTube. Once my IG live, this video is ending in one minute and 40 seconds. Once it dies, I will restart the video, but the whole video will be on my YouTube. Um, so damn it, what was the thing? Oh yeah, so I listened to one, um, reader, read on Nipsey Hussle's death, and they were just saying, you know, it was about money, and it was somebody that's bigger than we all know, somebody famous in the industry, um, who we all know, who was really behind this, and that is three people, and they kept saying a woman is involved, but it's like a really powerful man who we all know, and so I listened to this, and I said, hmm, so I listened to this, this one reading, and then other readings popped up. So I, for like a few days, I was listening to readings on Nipsey Hussle, different readers, right? Just to see if they all say the same thing, if they're all getting the same thing or what. That's how I like to research. I like to look at different sources. And consistently, I kept hearing the same thing. Consistently, I kept hearing people say that the, the mother of the daughter was going to lose custody. And consistently, people said that it was something that was much bigger than what we realized, that... The man who killed him was basically hired to do it, and it was there were higher ups, and that freaked me out because I'm thinking, okay, so if you get a lot of money and you're about something, like I know for me myself, I can't be bought. Okay, Nipsey was a Leo, I'm a Leo. I stand in my strength. I'm not gonna do shit I don't want to do. That's how Leos are. Okay, Nipsey was that kind of person. But when you're dancing with the devil, 
with a lot of money and you don't want to do what they want you to do, hold on. I'm going to, hold on one second. Oh, fuck. It didn't save it. Okay, hold on. Hold on, YouTube. Okay, that was annoying. I just did this whole hour of talking. And I tried to save the video, and it didn't freaking save. It didn't save. So, to my IG people, this is the second part of this video, but the first part will not be archived because it didn't save. But you can find this entire video on my YouTube page, The Renaissance Amazon, okay? Just remember, when you just missed an hour of talking, you can find the entire video on my YouTube page, The Renaissance Amazon. Um... So yeah, I listened to these readings about Nipsey yesterday. Let me see how it plays out. Um, I, I kept hearing people say he wasn't protected. A lot of people said that at the moment he didn't have this protection, he wasn't protected. Spiritually. And so I kept thinking about that because, you know, spiritual protection to me is really so something that I know, something I study. So it kept freaking me out because I kept thinking like, oh my God, it's so important. It's so important to work on... To work on spiritual protection along with physical protection is so important because if you just focus on, they're both important, but if you just focus on physical protection and not spiritual, the people who are around you could kill you, okay? And people who you think are your friends could kill you, okay? So you need that spiritual protection. And I just kept thinking about that and how he got killed over jealousy and how much I had been told in my life that people are jealous of me. How many times I've been told in my life that really bad negative energy is being sent my way because of jealousy, okay? I have so many stories to tell that I could be talking for the next two hours, okay, about this and the things that have happened in my life in the seen and the unseen that made me understand this, okay? And made me understand that certain people, like, certain people really can't play, okay, when it comes to protecting yourself, right? Um, my dad has always been obsessed with teaching me to protect myself physically, right, from men who may attack me. Luckily, I've never been in a situation where I've had to cut a dude, okay? But I have been around dudes who've been a little nuts, and I have removed myself from them, away from them before it got to them, okay? So I'm very much aware of the physical realm and protecting myself, not putting myself in certain situations, being careful who I'm around, and yada, yada, yada. But the spiritual protection is important because if you ignore that, like, and somebody's sending some negative energy your way, no matter how cautious you try to be physically, that shit's going to catch up to you. It'll come through who needs to come, come through, and it will catch up to you. Um, and, you know, with Kobe's death, I wasn't even... I wasn't even, like, I don't, I'm a huge fan of the NBA. Of course I knew who Kobe Bryant was, of course, but I never really paid attention to him like that. Like... And so it was when he died, I was um, I was really bothered by that shit. I was in, in Amsterdam when I found it out, and it really disturbed me a lot. And then when I found out his daughter was there, it really disturbed me. And I was thinking about it for a few days, and it made me cry, okay? And I don't know him. I wasn't even a fan, really. Like, I didn't, I didn't dislike him or like him. He was just a basketball player to me, right? And there are lots of online readers doing readings on him. And all of them said that Kobe was killed, all of them. Okay, and actually, there's a video, um, there's a video by Umar Johnson, and I, I'm not a fan of Umar Johnson. I never listened to Umar Johnson talk in my life. I, I just always thought he was a fraud, period, right? So I never even listened to Umar Johnson talk, because I was raised by, like, real black intellectuals, so a lot of the people like him, I'm like, whatever. So I never took him seriously, never listened to him, but there's a video that he did on Kobe Bryant being murdered. And I'm going to tell you that every single thing that Umar Johnson says in this video about Kobe being murdered and why. Every single thing he said was also said by these readers. I listened to so many readers about Kobe's death. They all said that, they, they said a lot of different things, okay? A lot of different things. It's deep, very deep. But the sum total of listening to all of it, um, I definitely concluded that he was killed. Definitely understand it was over money, right? Now, why, why was it over money? There's a bunch of different reasons. Okay, but when you have a lot of money, and you're dealing in that big money world, big business, 
and they want you to do something and you don't want to do it. Or you have your own mind and want, you have your own money making idea and you want to do it independently of the big structure and how the big structure wants it to happen. They will take you out of here and they don't give a fuck who else is around. So for me, I understand that in order for me to really complete my mission, okay, in order for me to really complete my mission, I have to be alive, okay? My dad, and Kobe did, a, Kobe did a lot, but he didn't get to complete everything. We know his daughter didn't, and that broke my heart more than anything. More than him, it was his daughter, because I have a very soft spot, you know? Like, I have a soft spot for female athletes. I'm so team female athlete, period, okay? Period. Female athletes are on a pedestal to me. There's so many reasons. You know, because female athletes, we have to deal with, you know, menstrual cycles and pregnancy and had a baby and playing sports. And um, we don't do it for the, for the groupies, you know. Girls don't get the kind of money that boys get, unless you're Serena, you know. Female athletes don't get the kind of money that the guys get. They don't get the kind of notoriety. And male athletes, even when they're broke, even when they're broke college students, they have so many freaking... Um, they have so many um, groupies, right? Female athletes don't, don't usually have that, you know? And we don't play sports for the groupies, you know? It's not even about that. So I think the female athlete doesn't have the kind of ego that the male athlete has. And when you see athletes doing dumb shit, it's usually men. I, I can't think of any female athletes in the press for doing some dumb shit. But male athletes, constant, okay? So... I feel like the female athlete is a little bit more intelligent, a little bit more balanced. You know, she has to deal with so much more to me. Like, I'm amazed at women who compete in the Olympics. In the past four years, they had a baby. It's like, yo, you were competing at a world-class level. Everybody's world-class. You took a year off to have a baby, and they, they were still training, and that shit set you back. But you still come back to the Olympics and win medals. That's amazing. Men don't have stories like that. Men don't have stories like Serena, you know, competing pregnant and shit, okay? Or how Beyonce did the Super Bowl in New Orleans, she had just had Blue Ivy. Like, Michael Jackson and, and, and uh, Prince never had to do no shit like that. So to me, I'm more amazed by women, period, right? So to me, what Kobe's daughter was about to be, you know, was going to be like an even better version of him because she's a woman. Like me and my dad, you know? I'm, I, anybody who knows me knows I'm a, I'm a daddy's girl. Like, I love my dad, and I'm so much like my dad. And little girls have stars in their eyes when it comes to their dads. I have a, a real soft spot for father-daughter relationships, right? But a lot of times the daughter does, is a better version than her dad because she's a girl, you know? And so with me and my dad, it's like my dad has always said to me, and, and I, I, my dad to me is one of the smartest people I know. He was a professor of Afro-American studies at 27 years old. He had no college degree. Actually, he was one of the founders of the first Afro-American studies department in the country, the W.E.B. Du Bois Afro-American studies department at UMass Amherst. Dr. J was his student and is still friends with him to this day. I wouldn't even know who Dr. J was really probably if it wasn't for my dad because I was never really into men's sports like that. Now, Nicole was his student and my dad was kicked out of Florida A&M for being involved in the civil rights movement. So he didn't even have a college degree because he was, 1960 was my dad's freshman year of college. That's when the student sit-in started at um, North Carolina A&T. My dad was a student at Florida A&M. And he became involved in the movement and in being from Florida, Florida black people back then, I don't know about now, it was like, it might be a different breed, but Florida black people were very militant. And my dad had to leave Florida because he felt like he's either gonna kill somebody or get killed, right? Um, Kill a cracker, I get killed by a cracker, right? So he went up north to Philly, and then later New York. So, um, and my dad was a journalist in my lifetime, but my dad was also, like, I, as a little girl, I was amazed by him, but I also purposely watched him and didn't want to take on the negative attributes that he had, right? And it was a conscious effort for me not to do that. And I remember being a little girl, like, I don't know, I might have been two or three, right? And I remember thinking to myself, I remember thinking, um, I used to pray to God, even though I wasn't raised in church, right? And I don't even believe in Jesus and all that. But I used to pray to God that 
please don't send my daddy to hell. I used to always say that. I'd be like, God, please don't send my daddy to hell. He doesn't know any better. Because even though my dad is like this extreme intellectual, he's also a little crazy and he's ratchet, right? So I, and he's, he, sometimes he can be hard to deal with. So I used to pray for him. Like, God, please don't send my daddy to hell. He doesn't know any better. And I used to think, when my dad gets old, he's going to be really annoying. No one's going to want to be bothered with him. Oh, my gosh. And I didn't want to put him in a home. Right? I'm thinking this. I'm like three years old. I'm like, I don't want to put my daddy in a home. So my whole thing was I wanted to have a house with a basement so I could put my dad in the basement and I wouldn't have to put him in a home. Okay? So I'm a little, like, three years old thinking about taking care of my dad. Like, daughters and fathers. And I have a twin brother, and my twin brother also has a good relationship with my dad. But me and my dad, okay, that's all I'm going to say. So a lot of times, um, girls are even a, a better version of her dad. And if you look throughout history... You know, you constantly see stories of amazing women, warrior women, who got their power from their dad, okay? So that that's a major thing. But, okay, so um, getting back to the point is just that um, I feel like when people, when, when, when horrible things happen or somebody's in a freak accident, I feel like everything that happens to you is in your energy fields first, Okay. It's in your energy fields first. And even, like, a lot of people might have had a mother or a grandmother who they said always prayed for them. I know that my mom used to always tell my brother and I, when we were growing up, she's like, I pray for you every day. I pray for you every day. My mom always used to tell me that, right? And um, I even got told once in, in one of my readings that um, energy, such, such fucked up spiritual energy had been sent to me that it kills most people. And that the only reason why I'm still alive is because my ancestors were so strong. And that my grandmother was always praying for me, right? So um, I had been told that. And I have stories that make me that I could tell you that make me believe that, that I'm not going to get into right now. I'm sorry. Oops. Um... But because of that, it's also one of the reasons, because I know this to be true, and I know what I'm here for, I know what my past life was, you know, when, 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 when people, um, you know, ask me, why do I call myself Amazon, and they think that has something to do with my height, it doesn't, okay? And Amazon, if you look up the legacy of Amazons, and they existed on every continent, Amazons were fighting women, okay? They were fighting women. They didn't want to fight. But they fight it to defend the matriarchy when the patriarchy started attacking, okay? These women fought for their people. They fought for what was right. That is who the Amazons were, okay? And when I think sometimes about how hard shit is in my life, or, you know, oh, or you could ask yourself, like, why don't I have this, or why don't I have that? When I start to do that, I have to check myself. Because I'm like, you know what? You never know how hard your ancestors could be working for you right now. Your ancestors could be motherfucking exhausted keeping your ass alive right now. Okay, because I travel all over the place. I have never been in a car accident. Think. Think everybody. Think the whole universe for that. Okay. Never been in a car accident. Um, nobody's ever raped me. Nobody's ever kidnapped me into sex trafficking. No man's ever hit me. Okay, I've never had anything... I like that happened, okay? And even when I lost my son, it opened up, it taught me a lot because I started to realize how many black women lose babies in particular. Women women in general, okay, that can happen. But with black women, it's a thing. It's almost like every black woman I know in America has lost a baby, you know, in, in some shape or form. Like, it's an epidemic with us. So it opened my eyes to a lot. And I feel like a lot of that is also ancestral. A lot of that is ancestral. And so... Um, like, like I said, things are in your energy fields first, right? And when something traumatic happens to us and we don't deal with it, okay? If something traumatic happens, and this happens a lot with kids. This is why childhood trauma can be so bad. Because when kids go through something traumatic, they, a lot of times, just because they're kids, they can't, they're stuck in a situation. So a lot of times they just close up, they don't process it, they don't um, they don't have ways to like work that through and out of their body. 
So they close up, act like it didn't happen, and it leaves imprints in your energy fields. Those imprints can be passed on to your children, okay? Those imprints can be passed on to next generations, and that's from men and from women. So this is one of the reasons why black people in the diaspora danced and shook so hard. If you look at the countries, slavery was harsh everywhere in the Americas. But if you look at the countries where it was the most harsh, okay, namely Haiti, Jamaica, and Brazil. Haiti, Jamaica, and Brazil had like three of the harshest forms of slavery. That was way worse than the U.S. and like, you know, other places. Because the U.S., there wasn't as many Africans. We weren't indispensable. So they were harsh to us, but they weren't really trying to kill us because they couldn't get more and it wasn't a surplus. Haiti had a surplus of Africans. Uh, Brazil had a surplus. The slave trade in Brazil ended, like, when slavery ended in America, they were just ending the slave trade. Okay? And the slave trade had been done in the U.S. for a couple hundred years prior to that. So, or something. Like, so, um, the thing is, is that, um, you look at those countries, you see intense shaking and gyrating. I mean, Jamaicans, the way Jamaicans dance now is highly disturbing to me. Like, dudes jumping off of shit onto women, that's a whole nother fucking thing. There's a lot of aggression in their dancing. But if you look at um, Haiti, Brazil, there's intense shaking. Haitian folkloric dance is highly overtly sexual. A lot of movements of the pelvis. A lot of shaking, gyrating. Brazil, people, black, nobody shakes harder than black Brazilians, okay? And a lot of that has to do with shaking the shit off, okay? Shaking it off, resetting your energy fields, letting it go. In Haiti, there's a dance called, wow, it's so loud, sorry. In Haiti, there's a dance called Banda, right? It's a dance of the dead. And it's a dance that's done for the dead. And this dance is highly sexual. Okay, erotically sexual. I remember when the earthquake happened in Haiti in 2010. I remember we did a fundraiser for Haiti. I remember that the, because I was dancing for a Haitian folklore company at the time, the woman that ran the company, she um, had a sister that was trapped under a house in Haiti that they knew that, like her sister was alive, but they knew she was going to die because nobody was going to go to that part of Haiti to save her. Um, everybody, all the drummers lost tons of family members. But when you came into that room, it was so upbeat, Okay. And the dancing that we did was, we did the Dance of the Dead, which is very sexual. We did Yanvalu, um, which is another dance that's used to welcome the spirits. That's very serpentine. Also, a lot of undulations in, um, in the pelvis, okay? And if somebody walked in that room, they would have thought, this is for, you know, it, 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 a lot of people wouldn't have understood, like, okay, this doesn't seem sad. Like, people lost all these family members, and they're over here, like, humping the floor, and dancing to all this upbeat stuff. And I remember I learned so much from Haitians during that time. And then I went to Haiti that a couple months after the earthquake. And we got off the plane, and this has never happened to me anywhere. But we were greeted by the most beautiful singing and music from Haitian musicians. Port au Prince had crumbled, okay? Crumbled, but they're singing. And I remember when the earthquake happened, I remember rescuers saying that they found old women found old women um, underground, buried, who were singing. And they found them because they were singing, okay? So there's so much I, I learned from, from, from just Haitian cosmology. For me, when it comes to spirituality, I resonate with Haitian cosmology and Native American cosmology over anything. I could say a mixture, Haitian cosmology, Native American cosmology, and the Congo, okay? That's what I resonate with when it comes to spirituality. I don't conform to any one particular spiritual practice, but, you know, I take what makes sense to me. And But those are the things that resonate with me and what has taught me the most. Um, and so that, that, okay, so getting to, I've been talking for a long time. But the thing is, is that, a few things, is just that, you know, none of us are going to get through life without trauma, right? Without sad times. We have to, and death is a part of life, right? Death is a part of life. So we have to find ways to um, let certain things go, process stuff, shake it off, okay? And so bringing it back around to even the reason why I told some of the stories that I told is because... 
every time something really traumatic has happened to me, I have purposely, purposely done things to help let that shit go. So when I lost my son, and as depressing and sad as that was, that's when I got into pole dance, actually. The very first time I got into pole dance. Um, I did it so that if I'm focusing so hard on this training, my mind can't be sitting here thinking about this sad thing because now my mind is occupied with doing this thing. And this thing that I was doing was helping me to be physically and mentally stronger. Pole dance is hard as fuck, okay? You might think it looks hard, but it's harder than you think, okay? It's harder than you think. You might think it looks easy or hard, whatever. It's still harder than you think. It's very painful, and a lot of it is really scary, okay? So that was my way of facing my fears. That was my way of, pro of taking my mind off of that and doing something productive that's going to make me better, okay? Not sitting here smoking crack or shooting heroin or doing some crazy, becoming an alcoholic, becoming self-destructive. No. When I've had, whenever I've had a bad breakup, you know, I had a horribly traumatic breakup after that, okay? Um, in 2014, that took me like a year to kind of like get to back to myself, even though I broke up with the dude, but it was just the way that this shit happened. And during that time, I immersed myself again in pole dance and I immersed myself in taking Afro-Caribbean dance classes because the, 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 the live drumming in the Afro-Cuban class and a Haitian class See, luckily I'm from New York where there's a lot of that. Like, unless you're in New York in the Bay Area, that stuff is hard to find, right? If you don't live in New York or the Bay Area, Detroit has some. Detroit has, the, the Detroit and Arbor area has some. But if you don't live in New York or um, the Bay, I suggest taking a trip there for like five days and just taking several dance classes, right? Put yourself through that. Because I can't think of, I can't think of many things that can substitute for black dance. I'm saying live drums in front of you, live drummers. Those live drums make a difference. And doing these incredibly intense dances that if you're black, if you're colored, if you're Afro-Indigenous, comes from your ancestors. But even if it doesn't come from your ancestors, if you're white or you're from some, you're Asian, it, that doesn't mean that that medicine won't work on you too. We can use medicine, we can learn from other people in the world. So Asians and white people also can heal doing black dance, right? But when you're focused so much on, like, Haitian dance is highly complex. When you focus so much on your shoulders doing one thing, your hips doing another, your head doing another, your feet doing another, you're focused on, on that coordination, these drums are screaming at you, and you're sweating like crazy, you're shaking like crazy, you definitely feel better when you're done, okay? And there's not many things I feel like that can substitute for that, period, point blank. So for me, I do that. You know, I go lift weights. I get on the pole. I write. Hold on. See? Notebooks, okay? I constantly write. Writing is therapy for me. I've been writing since I was a kid, and writing has gotten me in trouble, but I still write. And it's gotten me in trouble from... People who want to read my journals and do shit like that, right? But I still am going to write. When I have a big problem with somebody, because I don't remember every issue I've had over the years. When I have a major issue with somebody, I write about that shit. So it's documented. So like, if you come back three years later trying to be my friend or trying to mess with me, I could remember why the fuck I stopped fucking with you in the first place, right? I write. But also when I do that, it makes me feel better. If someone really pisses me off or I'm really upset and I write a lot, I always feel better when I'm done. You have to have ways to process shit. You cannot just sit there sad, okay? You can't just sit there like, oh, I'm sad this happened and just cry and just be sad. What are you actively doing to let that go and process that, right? And shake it off. And um, I was about to say, Death, you know, when we don't learn to let go at death, this is why they dance in New Orleans at death, okay? And I love that practice. I remember being a little girl, and my dad told me when he dies, he said, when I die, I don't want a sad funeral. When I die, I want a, a party, I want a band, I want a celebration, everybody dancing. And I remember being a little girl thinking, like, what? Like, that's such a sad thought to me. How could people be having a party at your, at, when you're dead? But I understand it now. And so even when I... 
as sad as the situation is with Kobe and, G and Gianna, I feel like people need to stop singing the sad songs already, right? Like, it's to stop. Do something upbeat. Dance for them. Dance for them, okay? You might shed a tear while you're dancing, but dance for them. I had a cousin, a little cousin that was six years old, who got hit by a car in Charlottesville, Virginia, and died, okay? She got hit by a car and killed right in front of her, mo her mother and her older 10-year-old sister. I personally don't know how people come back from shit like that, okay? And my cousin, her father, was working in D.C. and had to drive back to Charlottesville knowing that his daughter had been hit by a car. I don't know how, as a mother, you process that. How you could go on and not be overly paranoid when something like that happens, right? But I remember at my cousin's funeral, it was, you know, the, the, the repass, it was... They had all these drums outside. It was sunny. They had all these balloons. It was like a it was like a kid's birthday party, with nonstop drummers. And I joined in and I drummed. And there were nonstop drummers. And it's like you have to have something like that. You cannot just sit around and sing a sad song and be sad and keep playing sad music. You've got to do things that is going to make you laugh. Okay, laughter is another thing that's extremely important when it comes to healing trauma. Okay, is laughter. You know, um, I always talk about this woman, Pakazani, I study with in L.A., and I'm about to go to L.A. next month uh, to work to work with her. She will forever be my friend and my teacher, and I will do anything for this girl. Like, if you want to be on some gang gang shit, I will do anything for her. But I've learned so much from Pakazani, right? Um, also known as Indigimama, when you can find her on IG and YouTube. But she uses humor for everything. You could tell her the most sad, depressing fucking story in the world, and she will make a joke out of it. She makes a joke out of everything. And that's another part, a huge part of Native American medicine is laughter. Laughter, okay? Not taking anything too seriously, finding the humor in it, even when you feel like you can't find the humor in it. And Pakistani, she will make a joke out of everything. I remember even my childhood best friend, um, we've been best friends since the fourth grade. She's Jamaican and Jewish. Not, not that that matters, but, like, I remember when I lost my son, she said, because the dude that my ex who I was with, he was short, right? He was shorter than me, and I don't even like, no offense, but I don't like men that are shorter than me. I prefer a man that's taller than me. But I remember my best friend said, oh, he, he, and talking about my son, like, oh, he decided, you know, not to come here because he didn't want to be short, right? And so she cracked the joke in this traumatic situation, but it was funny, you know? And it's like, that's important. You have to find the laughter. Laugh medicine, Okay. Writing. And I feel like a lot of men do not write. Like, if you don't want to talk to anybody or whatever, but you, writing is so therapeutic and so important. Also, physically, I think it's important to have physical things that you do to, to like, get shit out of your system. The reason why I love dance so much is because when you dance for the dead, it's for you and it's for them. The dance of the dead that I learned in Haiti, I, the way it was described to me was, and this, but this dance is overtly sexual, and the woman who I danced with in her company, she said, well, it, the dance is associated with extreme drunkenness, rum, and overtly sexual dance. And she said, well, when you die, you can have as much sex as you want, and you can be as drunk as you want. And this dance is about making those that recently passed, making them happy, and letting them go in peace. Because if you just sit here being so sad and you can't believe this happened and you can't let go, you can't let go, then that spirit cannot rest in peace. So it's important for you and that spirit, for their journey to the next place, for you to let go. And for you to find ways to, as traumatic as something might be, to shake that out of your system. Okay? Then, and we can never completely prevent sad times and trauma, but also... Knowing how to cleanse your energy fields, knowing how to protect your energy, and then also observing the obvious, okay, in this, in this physical realm, observing the obvious. When you know people don't have your best interests at heart, when you know people are fucked up, you know, um, you got to get them out your life. Because it's so much worse when something horrible happens and you wish you would have done that. Um, and I don't take anything for granted. You know, even when I tell you I've never been in a car accident, like, my twin brother and I, when we drive, we don't play with that shit. We're not driving drunk. We keep our eyes on the road. We're not doing a million things. And my brother and I, we are so, he's never been in an accident neither. 
But we don't fuck with people who, who drive reckless. We're like, no, I'm not doing that. You know, because it's in a split second, your life could be over. People take stupid risks, you know, and they play with that shit. Um, I think that I might have said everything I needed to say. Um, there were so many things, you know, I wanted to say in my mind. As you, as you can see, my mind has gone to so many different places. Um, and I'm just trying to make sure I said everything. But if I didn't, I've been talking long enough, though. I'm sure you guys are tired. Let me see. Hour and 30 minutes. So I'm going to end this anyway. And if, and if whatever I didn't say, I'll do it in subsequent videos. Um, but it's just, I definitely know that I've built myself to a point where there's nothing that any individual out here in this world can say to me that will break me, okay? Like, I have something behind me much deeper than that, and I see a much bigger picture than that. You have to see the bigger picture, you know? And I, I definitely, sometimes I think, you know, whatever struggles I'm going through in this physical life, at least I'm still here. At least I pretty much have good health. At least my body still works, you know? Um, and so as long as that's the case, I'm good. I can keep doing what I need to do. But if I sit here and start crying, and woe is me, why is this happening to me, or why don't I have this, or, you know, you, you get stuck on what other people have, and which is stupid, because you don't know people's story. You could look at somebody, I think jealousy is such a pointless emotion. You could look at somebody else and be jealous, but you don't know what the fuck they're really dealing with. Somebody could see a gorgeous woman walking down the street and be like, I wish I looked like her. But that woman might have a fucking brain tumor. You don't know, okay? You do not know. So it's just, it's pointless to do that. Then, if you sit and you're, you're complaining about what you don't have, instead of being thankful for what you do have, if you are like me and you have ancestors who have your back, they could feel unappreciated. Because, unappreciated, because for all you know, if your ancestors didn't have your back, you might be dead too. Or really badly hurt. So this is the reason why I always focus on giving thanks, putting things into perspective, doing what I need to do to protect my energy fields, to cleanse my energy fields, to shake shit off. And to sum it up, oh shit. You can cleanse your energy fields with the beautiful Palo Santo in your house. Because that's the other thing, people can bring negative fucking energy into your house. I do this shit on my door. Like, this shit ain't coming in my door, okay? Um, you... Spiritual baths, okay? Another thing that's really important. Um, I Florida water. I went to Florida. Also, to clean, cleanse your energy fields. You know, um, crystals and stones. In your home, on your person... If you're a woman inside of you, all of those things can also help to protect your energy fields and block. Then there are certain things like if you're in, like let's say you have to go into an, an, um, an office building or like a, a jail or some place where you're you, you're in you're you're in an environment around a bunch of shady energy and you don't want to pick that shit up. You could do shit like cross your arms while you're sitting here the whole time. And, 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 and add the intention that this cross is to prevent that shit from coming into your energy fields. Or another thing I learned from traditional Chinese medicine applied kinesiology is zipping up like from the pubic area, using your mind that you're zipping up your shit. You're zipping up your whole aura. Locking it, throwing away the key. These people's negative energy cannot penetrate and get into your shit, okay? And I remember, and also, you know, this thing that I learned in Afro-Brazilian dance, of pushing things away. People talk about dust your shoulder off. Nah. Brush your whole fucking energy fields. Get the fuck away from me. Any energy that's not mine that's been sent to me from other people, get away. Get away, get away, get away. All of that is important, okay? If you're just living life, like, dee 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 not, not being conscious of any of those things, I'm not saying that bad things will happen to you, but it's a lot more likely, 
Okay? A lot more likely. So I'm going to stop talking because I've talked way longer than I thought. And um, any, please write your comments below on my YouTube channel if you like this video or you have things that you want to add. And that may then throw me into a part two of this conversation. Um, if you're on Instagram, understand that this is part two of this video. I did a part one, which was an hour long, but the camera stopped and uh, I wasn't able to save the video to archive it for you all. So you're only seeing the second part. So if you want to see the whole video, go on my YouTube page, The Renaissance Amazon, and you can find this whole discussion because there was a whole hour worth of talking prior to what you're seeing now. And um, if you like the video, like it, share it, and I think we got my point across for today. Okay, people, thanks for listening. Have a great day, and remember, protect yourself. Stay clean. Bye.